Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is find polygon with largest perimeter. So in this question, we're given a positive integer array called nums, which is having the length n. By definition, a polygon is a closed plane figure that has at least three sides and the longest side of the polygon is smaller than the sum of the other sides. So this is the main point where the whole logic depends on that the longest side of the polygon is smaller than the sum of its other side. So if there are k sides where k is greater than or equal to 3, where k represents positive real numbers, a1, a2 through ak, where a1 through ak are sorted in ascending order, which is not strictly increasing, and the sum of all its sides until k minus 1 is greater than the last side a of k, where a of k is the largest among all, and then if that condition satisfies, then there always exists a polygon with k sides whose length are a1, a2 through ak. And by definition, the perimeter of a polygon is the sum of the length of its sides. And the task is to return the longest possible perimeter of the polygon whose sides can be formed from the input array nums. If it is not possible, if this condition is not satisfied, we have to return minus 1, which represents it's not possible to create a polygon. Now let's take these examples and see how we can form this question. So let's take the first example. We are given the input array 555 and this is the main crux of the question. The longest side of the polygon is smaller than the sum of its other sides. Let's take a triangle. A triangle has three sides, right? A, B and C. So the sum of any two sides, A plus B, should be greater than the third side. Similarly for 4, there will be four sides, A, B, C, D, A plus B plus C should be greater than. So you have to get the sum of its previous sides and compare it with the third side. So a easier way will be to sort the four sides in ascending order and then compare the first three sides with the fourth side instead of comparing all the possible combinations. So it means that you have to sort this array in ascending order. So after sorting also it will remain the same 5 5 5 and now we will check the sum of these two sides 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 which is greater than the third side 5. So this is a valid pair. So here the polygon is having three sides and the sum of all its sides is equal to 15 so 15 is your output. So let's do the same for the second example and see how we can proceed further. First we have to sort the input array in ascending order. So after sorting the array will look like this. So here we sorted the array in ascending order so that we check this condition that there always exists a polygon with k sides and the sides are sorted in ascending order if that is the case till k minus 1 all the sides will be greater than the last side. So this should be the largest side which in our current comparison. And once this condition is valid, you have to get the sum of the sides you're considering until now and update it to a result. So you create a variable result which will keep track of the largest value which is initially the minimum possible value minus 2 power 31 minus 1 because we have to find the largest possible perimeter. So we start with the smallest value and now to calculate the sum of the sides, I create an array of the same length and call it prefix sum. So first we calculate the prefix sum value. So we start off with the first value. This will be the same now because there are no elements to its left which we have to add to its current value. So we start with prefix of 0 is equal to nums of 0. Then we take this value and add it to its previous value. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Then we are at here when i is equal to here. We take this value and add it to this. So we get 4. Now i is here. We take this value and add it to this value. We get 7. Now i is equal to 4. Take this value and add it to this value. We get 12. Now when i is equal to 5, you take this value and add it to this value. You get 24. And i is equal to 6. You take this value and add it to its previous value. You get 74. And now you have the prefix sum ready. Now we have to check this condition that we start with i is equal to 2 because that is the largest side and we are guaranteed that n starts with 3. So these are the previous two sides and this is the third side. We check if the third side, third side is 2, is greater than its previous two sides sum which is present here. 2 is greater than 2, no. So you don't update your final result and you move forward. Now i is equal to 3. So this is the third largest side and you check the sum of these values. The sum of these values is present here. So you check the current side which is 3. You check if 3 is less than. So the longest side which is the current element 3 is smaller than the sum of its previous sides. Is less than the sum of its previous side is 4. Yes. So you update this value. So result is now 7. So sum of these four elements 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 7. Now we move forward and compare if it is possible to add one more side to its current value. Now we are at i is equal to 4. We check this value if it is less than the sum of all these previous sides. So current value is 5. Sum of all the previous elements is 7. We check if 5 is less than 7. Yes. So the result is this because n is equal to 4. So result 
will be updated to 12 because sum of all these sides is equal to 12. Now we are at this element. Check if 12 is less than the sum of all its previous sides which is equal to 12. 12 is not less than 12. So result will still be 12. Now go to the next element. Next element is 50. Check if 50 is less than the sum of all its previous values which is present here. 50 is not less than 24. So you can't add this element to its previous value. So result will still be 12. And we reach the end of the array and we end the iteration. And whatever is present inside result will be returned as the output which is matching our expected output. Now let's try to implement the same steps inside a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name. This is the input array nums and we have to return a long variable as our output representing the largest possible parameter value. So let's start off by sorting the input array nums in ascending order. Now we are going to create an array which is going to uh, store the prefix sum of the input array nums. So this is also going to be of the same length. Since we are summing up the sites, we have to use a long array. So I'm going to name it prefix sum and this is also going to be of the same length as the input array nums. Now before filling our prefix sum, we know that there is no elements present to the left of the starting element. So prefix sum of 0 is going to be the first element inside the nums array, so nums of 0. And we already filled the 0th index position inside the prefix sum. So let's start a for loop where I will start from 1, which is used to fill the prefix sum. And I it will go until the length of the prefix sum array. Prefix sum of i, we're going to fill the ith element inside the prefix sum. It is going to be the sum of the current element nums of i plus the previous prefix sum value. So prefix sum of i minus 1. Now we declare our output array which is a long variable. So I'm going to name it result which is equal to minimum possible value because we have to find the largest sum. The minimum possible value of n is going to be 3 so which is representing the third side. So we start our iteration from i is equal to 2 which represents the third side inside the prefix array. So I take a for loop where i will start from 2 representing the largest uh, value and i will iterate until the end of the nums array. Now we have to check if the current value of nums, so nums of i, if nums of 2 is less than the prefix sum value. So prefix sum of i minus 1 because we have to check this condition, the longest side of the polygon is smaller than the sum of its other sides. Sum of its other sides is present at i minus 1's index position inside the prefix sum and the longest side of the polygon is the current element we are iterating at nums of i because you already sorted that. So this will be the largest for the current comparison. If this is the case, we have to update our result. So result is going to be equal to prefix sum of i because this condition satisfies. It means that we can form a pair including this current element. So if we add that current element into the prefix sum, we get the value present at prefix sum of i. So if we add prefix sum of i minus 1 plus nums of i, we get prefix sum of i. So we update result with that value and this for loop will iterate for all the elements present inside the nums array and we have our final answer present inside result. So before returning the result directly, we also have to check one condition that if it is not possible to create a polygon, we have to return minus 1. It means if result still remains integer dot min value, it means it hasn't been updated here. So we have to return minus 1 in that case. So let's check. So we have to return. I'm using ternary operators here. I have to check if result is still equal to minimum possible value. Use double equal to here. If it is equal to integer dot min value, then return minus 1 as the output. Else return the updated value which is present inside result. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are being accepted. Let's submit the code. And our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n log n because we are sorting the array in ascending order. And the space complexity is O of n because we are using a 1D array to calculate the prefix sum where n is the length of the input array nums given to us. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.